Good morning. When Jesus comes for the second coming, will his feet touch the earth? This morning we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and the 17th verse, and it reads thus, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now the last two mornings we've looked at verse 15 and then 16 yesterday, and so this goes along with it. If you haven't seen those, you might want to review it. But here we have this question. When Jesus comes, he appears in the sky. And, you know, there's some people who have this uh, teaching. They sort of have Jesus kind of walking all about. He's, he's moving up and down across the streets when he comes at the second coming. Is that, is that what the Bible teaches? And uh, this isn't a full-blown Bible study. This is a two-minute three-minute, four-minute devotional. But uh, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. Let's look at what it does teach. So we're at 17. Then, we already talked about the dead have risen, and now we're going to go and rise to meet the Lord in the air. Verse 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. So the, the risen believers at the first resurrection, Jesus has raised them from the grave, and then they and us, we... Uh, suddenly begin rising into the sky, and we meet Jesus. Where is Jesus? It says, we are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air is what it says. So Jesus comes at the second coming. He does not come down and walk around, and, and uh, he doesn't go and broadcast a big message to the UN or, or something like that. He, he just comes and he's seen in the sky. That's what we see at the second coming. So that's what the Bible teaches, and so we want to be, we want to stay with that, you know. The other ideas might be interesting. They might make for, you know, make, make millions of dollars for Hollywood, potentially. Um, but that's not what the Bible teaches. So we're staying with the Bible here. So the last sentence in verse 17 says, Thus we shall always be with the Lord. And that's something to notice here. There will never be a need to separate Right now, there's a need when we travel or go somewhere. Many times we separate. Sometimes we don't see our loved ones again, separated by thousands of miles or an ocean. There will never be a need to ever be separated again. Thus, we shall ever be with each other and with the Lord. And this is the time that's coming where all these impositions and situations that keep us from being united with each other, those things are going to be gone. So there are still some events to occur, and we find them in Revelation 20. We're not going to look at that right now. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians. But there's a thousand years that goes by, and then uh, while we're with him in heaven, and then the new Jerusalem descends to the earth, and we get into some pretty intense events at the absolute very end. But after verse 17 here, though, we never need to be apart from Jesus, and that's a beautiful piece. The picture here in the Bible is a picture of hope. A lot of people today are focused on the material, the moment, the manufactured. They want to, they watch C flicks with CGI, lots of animations. Everything's happening so fast, you don't have time to think. Uh, there's clever jokes, quick little repartees, and, and uh, boy, you don't have time really to hardly do anything, just watching all this moving stuff on the screen. But that's a very material look into this world. I want to look higher than that, and, and the Bible helps us to look higher than that. These things will not satisfy, but the Bible things will always satisfy us, and they will always draw us close to the Lord Jesus and help us on our way to heaven. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we look forward to the return of Jesus. Lord, Jesus is coming. This is our hope. Please, Lord, help us on the way. Help us to get our focus right. Sometimes the things that are the most important are the things that are the least flashy, and the devil is doing everything he can to uh, engage us with flashy nonsense. Please, Lord, bless us on the way. Help us to focus on the right things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Jesus does not touch the ground at the second coming, according to the Bible. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to fly? A positive way to think as we begin this new day. God be with you as you carry on in this day. Jesus is coming.